Welcome to Full Frontal. I'm Samantha B. Happy Pride Month. I will be celebrating as I celebrate every parade, riding the f in on Santa's sleigh. I believe in two things, equality and telling children they don't deserve gifts. But as much progress has been made with LGBTQIA plus rights in this country, there's one segment of the community that's still far underprotected intersex people. Unfortunately, like knowing what's chuggy, there's a severe lack of awareness about what it means to be intersex. And being intersex is way more common than most people realize. Experts estimate that as many as 1.7% of the population is born with intersex traits, which is roughly the same number of people with red hair or about the same number of people who've seen the band 98 Degrees Live. So like not everybody, but definitely people in your life. Intersex is an umbrella term that refers to people who carry variations in their reproductive and sexual anatomy that differ from what's traditionally male or female. They might have some XX chromosomes and some XY chromosomes. People who are born with differences in their chromosomes, gonads, ovaries, testes, internal organs, external organs, hormones, the list goes on and on. There are over 30 different ways somebody could be intersex. So let's start with some basic science. Unlike what gym teachers taught us in sex ed classes, sex is not binary. It's a spectrum. And by the way, those gym teachers were also wrong when they said that the only safe sex is sex with a banana. It's actually one of the least safe ways to have sex, as I found out the hard way. But I do see the appeal. While the majority of humans appear to exist at one end of the sex spectrum or the other, the word intersex refers to anyone who doesn't fit the typical binary. While intersex people might identify under the LGBTQ plus acronym, intersex conditions are not a sexual orientation or a gender identity. Just like you're left-handed or maybe you've got red hair, it's just a natural biological variation. It's a natural biological variation. Just like seeing the band 98 Degrees live on March 28, 1999 in Edmonton at the Dinwoody Lounge on the Heated Up Tour. I was there. I was there. And just like that, there is absolutely nothing wrong with being intersex. And for most people, it isn't medically harmful. The biggest problem is the stigma. Our society is so afraid of people who are different we shame or shun anyone who doesn't fit our definition of normal. And intersex people spending their entire lives sometimes not talking to another person about their life, their story, their body. That is heartbreaking. The only people who should ever have to hide themselves are the mole people who live in the sewers. And that's really just for their own safety because the sun will melt their eyes. Even worse, for decades, parents of intersex children have been pressured into allowing medically unnecessary cosmetic surgeries to quote unquote, fix their child. When parents have a newborn intersex kid, they're told their kid has a deformity of the genitals. Those are the words that are used. And then the doctor comes in and says, this is easy to fix, one or two surgeries, kid will never know. So of course, nervous, frightened young parents of an infant are gonna say, absolutely. New parents with an intersex baby are often desperate to have their child fixed, surgically turned into a boy or girl as fast as possible. This model for dealing with intersex children was developed in the 1950s by a psychologist, Dr. John Money. Dr. John Money, wow. I guess money really is the root of all evil. Dr. Money's ideas about gender were bullshit, but that's not the only problem with intersex surgeries. They can also cause serious medical and psychological damages. A lot of people had their genitals surgically altered in ways that left them with pain, with incontinence, with reduced sexual sensation, with all sorts of problems. That has long-term psycho and social uh, effects. Uh, wondering if your body is normal, feeling like you needed to be fixed, um, and really feeling a lot of shame and stigma around your body can have some pretty lasting effects, as you can imagine. The narrative they were crafting for my parents was that I was like an underdeveloped female child and that all the procedures they would do would help me develop into a fully developed female child. Pigeon Pagonis was 18 when they learned the truth about their medical history. It was like getting kicked in the stomach and just feeling like your whole life is a lie. Thankfully, these days, in many American hospitals, teams convene multiple healthcare specialists, including mental health providers, and disclosure to the child is now widely recommended. But intersex rights advocates argue that even more informed surgical decisions are still decisions being made for them without their consent. That child is going to have to live with the consequences of the medical decisions that were made for them 
for the rest of their lives, as opposed to making that decision on their own terms when they're much older. Now, I don't think that everyone who has experienced these surgeries are traumatized, but a good deal of us have felt like we've lost we've lost something, we've lost a part of ourselves. There's no modern medical evidence to support that these surgeries can be delayed uh, to an age where people can meaningfully participate in the conversations and choose the surgery for themselves. Yes, everyone should have the right to make their own choices about their body. Just like I had the opportunity to decide whether or not I should get a face tattoo to show how badass I am. I did, but for reasons I can't explain, TBS is CGI-ing it out. Late last year, in an historic first, 36 states from around the world called on the UN Human Rights Council to urgently protect intersex persons and for governments to investigate human rights violations against them. Among those nations, not the United States, not surprising, but to be fair, Austria only did it because they wanted the attention. Everyone knows they're Europe's thirstiest country. Despite how relatively far we've come in terms of LGBTQIA rights in this country, intersex people are still extremely vulnerable. So far, only one hospital in the United States, the Lurie Hospital of Chicago, has pledged to completely end medically unnecessary intersex surgeries. Activists see Lurie Hospital as the first step towards a nationwide medical system that actually cares about them. The United States needs to end non-consensual and medically unnecessary surgeries on intersex people, and we need to provide them with better support and care. Intersex rights are human rights. We'll be right back. Aw, thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, hit subscribe and visit our page for more videos. Or if you'd like to be radicalized, leave YouTube on autoplay.